Hey guys, it's Olivia and I'm back with another video. So, as you know, because you're watching this video right now, I make YouTube videos. <laughs> and I am always looking to upgrade my equipment and such and buy different equipment for different settings. So for example, for this setting, I have my little twinkly lights and I have my softbox lights and I have my 50 millimeter lens and my blue Yeti and all this stuff. And recently I made a video talking about my new car setup. So then equipment that I bought for that. And in this week's video, I'm going to unbox some more equipment that I bought, specifically the 7.5 millimeter lens from Seven Artisans and a Manfrotto mini pixie tripod. So here is the box. This is a giant box. This is from Amazon, as you can see from their tape. Um, I don't know why the box is so big because to my knowledge, a lens is like this big and then the tripod is like this big. So I don't know why it came in this giant box, but I got free shipping, so I don't really care about the size of the box, but we are going to unbox this. So I have my scissors right here, and I'm just gonna cut it open. See, the contents of this box are so small. They did not need this giant box. But anyways, here is a type of bubble wrap, I assume. And then we have the Seven Artisans lens and the Manfrotto Pixie tripod. So the first thing I'm going to unbox is the lens and it comes in this little box and it says Seven Artisans on the front. It's black on black, so I don't know if you can see it. Um, but I believe it is a Chinese company. So I have a Sony camera and I wanted a wide angle lens. This is actually a fisheye lens, but I wanted a wide angle lens, but the Sony 10 to 16, I believe it is, was $900, which is more expensive than the camera that I own. So I was like, haha, I don't just have that kind of money to spend. So I didn't spend it. And so I found this one on Amazon that should fit my camera. I did buy the E mount version, which is the type of lens that my camera takes. So we're going to unbox it and see if it fits. <laughs> so it has these two little tabs of tape that I'm just going to cut with the scissors. And then the box opens like so. And so inside we have some paper, which I assume are the instructions, but they are not in English. If you can tell me what language that is, feel free to comment it down below. And then we also have this lens cleaner and a, I'm not quite sure what this is, but it has a picture of a lens on it and this little piece. Once again, if you know what it is, feel free to tell me down below. And then this little pouch to carry it around in. Then there is this foam, take off the top foam. And there is the lens. So it's wrapped in this plastic, just going to take it out. Ooh, this is actually heavy. Like, for the price, this was 189 Canadian dollars. I'll have everything linked down below in case you're curious and you're looking into getting an affordable lens. But this is actually hefty for something that's cheap. I wouldn't call it cheap. $200 is not cheap, but for lenses, that's pretty affordable. And then it has this lens cap, so let's take that off. Look at that lens. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is just me, but I love looking at camera lenses. I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's just something I like to do. And then the back comes off, and this is the part that goes onto the camera. So this is a manual lens, meaning 
on the top here it has these dials that you turn and you use them to adjust the f-stop and the focus so as i said it is a fisheye lens a 7.5 millimeter f.28 so it lets in a decent amount of light and it's gonna give me a very wide angle so why did i buy this lens why did i want a wide angle lens in the first place i I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna turn into a vlogger, <laughs> but in my video about the Zoom H1N unboxing and I was like showing you um, how everything would sound in my car if I was doing car videos, I said in that video that I wanted to do more videos that weren't stationary, that weren't in this room. And so I don't have a wide angle lens, so if I'm gonna be carrying around my camera with me to do more outdoorsy shots, I can't really be carrying around my 50 millimeter lens that doesn't work. So I wanted a wide angle, and this one was affordable. And so if I'm going to join the world of vloggers, I'm also gonna need a mini tripod. I considered getting a Gorillapod, but honestly, it was too expensive because for my camera, I would've needed the Gorillapod 1K, which was like 60 bucks, and this was like 30 bucks. So, mm -hmm. Manfrotto, making those affordable tripods. I appreciate you. So it just comes in this plastic, the kind that everyone hates and it's like impossible to open, but we're gonna try and open it today. So I have my scissors and we're just gonna cut. And so here is this paper, I assume, maybe it's instructions or maybe it's just a picture, I don't really know, but there's this paper. And then here we have the tripod. And once again, this has a little weight to it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that these affordable items, like they feel like sturdy, they feel very good quality, oh my gosh. This is great, oh my gosh. I'm so happy with this purchase. I know that I just opened it, but no buyer's remorse at all. So with my little vlogging setup, let me just show you what that will potentially look like really quickly. So once again, I can't show you my camera because I'm using it to film, but I have this other camera. This is the Sony a6400. I use the Sony a5100 and so what it's gonna look like so i have my little bracket which already has my zoom h1n on it and so i'm going to take the camera and i'm going to screw it on to the bracket like so and then i'm going to take my mini tripod and screw it into the bottom and it will look a little something like this. Oh my gosh, am I a vlogger or what? Like, <laughs> am I a vlogger? Am I a vlogger? Oh my gosh, I'm... <laughs> I actually feel like so official right now and I haven't even filmed anything yet. Oh my gosh, am I a vlogger? Am I a vlogger? I'm so proud of me. <laughs> So, and then this is just the kit lens that's on it. Obviously, I will be putting on the lens that I just bought. And so right now when I'm filming this, it is like 9.45 p.m. on September 30th, and this isn't gonna go up till October 7th. So I'm filming this a week in advance. Once again, I'm so good at YouTubing. Look at me not procrastinating, getting videos filmed beforehand. Oh my gosh, once again, such a good YouTuber. Um, <laughs> so... It is night right now, so I can't like go outside and like show you my little vlogging setup. So that is what I'm going to do tomorrow. So the next clip you're gonna see is me tomorrow on Tuesday, October 1st. Um, testing out this new setup, testing out the audio, testing out the lens, it's gonna be so great. And throughout the week I might do some videoing and take some pictures with the new lens just to see what it looks like, use it in different scenarios. I might use this lens in my car, use it while I'm walking around. We're gonna do like a little review of this tripod 
with the new lens and we're just gonna test my new vlogging setup or you know what I don't even know if I'm gonna call it a vlogging setup I'm gonna call it my portable setup because I can't promise you that I'm just gonna become this vlogger I promise you my life isn't that interesting so it's still Monday I have switched over to the Sony a6400 that's what I'm filming on right now so that I can show you my Sony a5100 and what it looks like on the tripod it looks pretty much the same this camera is just a little bit smaller and more compact and that is why i'm going to be walking around with this one and so i just want to show you what the lens that i just bought looks like on the camera so first i'm going to click the release button turn take off the lens and i'm going to put the lens on the camera take off the cap and so that is what it looks like this is what I will be seeing right there that's what I'll be seeing when I'm filming my outside videos and the lens just looks so cool like look at how purple it is I don't know I I love it like I haven't filmed anything with it yet, but <laughs> just looking at it, it looks pretty. I'm going to be happy to look into this lens because it just looks so pretty. So this is what it looks like. This is going to be the setup. This is the camera, the lens, the mic, the tripod. This is what it's going to look like. And next you're going to see some footage from this tomorrow morning when there's good lighting outside. So it is the next day. It is Tuesday, October 1st. It's 9.24 a.m. And this is the first clip that I am filming with this fisheye lens. I am currently in my car. I am currently on my way to school right now. And I thought that I would mount it like I do with my new car setup and just drive to school and see what this lens looks like. So basically for the next few days, I'm just going to test this lens in scenarios that I plan to use it in. So I plan for this to be my lens when I'm in the car. I plan for this to be my lens if I'm out and about, walking around handheld. So those are things that I'm going to test. So this is my car driving setup test. And let me know what you guys think about how it looks because I can't really see because I'm not really looking at myself because I'm looking at the road because I'm driving but yeah um, in comparison to I'll link one of my car videos if you want a video to look at for a comparison um, with this lens you can see my steering wheel and so yeah you can see more with my other lens you can still see all five seats um, but with this you can see a little bit more so you know that I'm actually in a car and I'm actually driving you can see the the landscape moving outside so you know that I'm actually moving so yeah I don't know you can see a little bit more there's more in the field of view so yeah I just thought that I would test it on my daily commute to school okay so now it is later in the day um it is about 3 30 p.m and i just came outside to a park so i'm literally just in this park right now just to show you other things that i could potentially be doing i'm not really a park walker <laughs> but i will probably be walking around at some point maybe i bring the camera to school and I'm walking around on campus. So I just wanted an open space just to walk around to show you guys what it looks like. So what I found, I haven't filmed any other clips, but I have just turned on the camera and like looked at what the picture looks like. What I found is when I'm indoors, and I will show that in a future clip in this video, but when I am indoors, it like bends the walls a lot and it looks very crazy. But this is the first time I'm seeing it outdoors and it doesn't look super crazy or like super bent, super bowed around the edges, which I like. So yeah, for outside filming, I feel like it's good for indoor filming well you'll see <laughs> another thing that I've noticed 
is that since the angle is so wide and as you saw in the very first clip where I like showed you like how I would mount it and hold the tripod and such um, the angle is so wide and I have my mic on the side that I have to tilt the mic away I'll insert a picture I have to tilt the mic away so that it's not in the shot like this is what it looks like when the mic is straight on straight facing me and as you can see the little windscreen that i have of the mic is in the shot so i actually have to turn the mic away from me in order for it to not be in the shot because of how wide the shot is so because of this i don't know how great the audio is i think it's still good because this audio has a right and left channel so let's say that right now most of the audio is coming from the left channel then what i'll do in post is copy the left channel to the right channel so instead of having um stereo audio i'll just have mono audio and then i'll use the left side since that side is going to be the louder side or maybe it's the right, right side whichever side is the one that's facing me right now and whichever side ends up being louder when i put this um audio onto my computer i'll just copy that side to both sides of your headphones and then you won't even notice so that's a little bit more post-production that needs to be done because um of the way that I have to position the mic in order for it to not be in shot. But for me personally, that's not a big deal. If that is a big deal for you and you have a camera like mine where you can't mount um, the mic on top and you're gonna have to mount it on the side, it's going to be in frame. So since my mic isn't a shotgun mic, meaning it doesn't have to be directly facing me, it can be facing away because then one of the channels is still gonna pick me up. So yeah this is my little shot and as you can see there is so much in frame and like i can even like hold it this close although it makes my face kind of big but yeah i can hold it out and you can see so much if i was going to take a group photo or a group video like if i had some of my friends and we were just like on a walk i could literally get all of us in the shot i could have a whole group of people behind me so that's really good so that's um more of a review on the lens as for the manfrotto tripod i very much enjoy it it's heavy but in a good way like not like oh this is very cheap light plastic it feels like it's gonna break so it's heavy it's sturdy and i like it and yeah it's very good there, it, there's a little weight in my hand like i don't know if you noticed but i have switched hands and so yeah there's a little bit of a weight to it but it's not bad and it definitely stands up on its own let me put this on the ground for you real quick so now i'm just sitting the tripod up on the ground once again i'll insert a picture somewhere and yeah it stands up just fine on its own and it's easy to carry it's portable it's small it's great this setup this setup is where it's at i might have to vlog more i'm not once again i'm not promising i'm going to be a daily vlogger my life is not that interesting but let me turn up this iso for a second oh there we go now you can see me better um but I might have to do some more on the go stuff simply because I like it so much like this is really I I am liking this setup I am liking this setup also something that I said earlier in the video how I said how you could see the windscreen covering my mic I actually just bought that about 10 minutes ago um, <laughs> and it's because it was windy earlier today. It's not very windy now, but I bought it because if I'm going to be out and about, it's probably going to get windy. So I went and I bought it. I didn't buy the one for the Zoom H1 because it comes with this whole kit and the kit is like 20 bucks and I don't want to spend 20 bucks. So I just bought one separately for $5 and it was kind of big. It's for like an actual mic that people sing into. So I just turned it inside out and put it on 
and it works once again I'll probably insert a picture so you can see what it looks like but yeah so I got a windscreen for it so that's another thing that I added to my setup I guess if you want to know which one it is or you want to buy a similar one I'll have one linked down below and yeah so that's another thing that I added to this little setup a windscreen for when it gets windy because it's been windy lately something that I should have said in the beginning of this clip it is quite overcast right now so this is what it looks like in an overcast position and if I ever get too dark I can just adjust the ISO not too high right now the ISO is at 320 and the picture looks very good the picture looks very sharp I am very impressed by this lens so far and the tripod is so easy to carry around it's heavy but not too heavy and it's just trust me I'm gonna be you're gonna see this a lot more often so this is the low light test I am shooting this at about 10 30 at night I'm just walking down the street and as you can see it's pretty hard to see my face the only light out here is the street lights and so if I turn towards the street light the it's pretty clear you can see me it's probably very grainy i have the iso turned up to 12,800, so quite high um and then if i turn away from the street light as you can see i'm basically a shadow so if i were to walk backwards you'd be able to see me probably very grainy but this is the low light test the um f-stop since this is a manual lens the f-stop is turned all the way to 2.8 which is the widest that it goes and this is what it looks like and i had to turn the iso way up in order for it to look like this if i turn the iso down as you can see i pretty much disappear and then i can turn it up to the highest it will go is 12,800. the camera does go up to um 25,600 but for some reason it won't let me select that right now however I think it looks pretty decent it's not the best it's not ideal but it works and it gets the job done so as I said in a previous clip when you are filming on the fisheye lens indoors everything looks very distorted the walls are bent this door is bent it just looks very disorienting meanwhile as you can see on this side-by-side -side comparison the left is the clip that you just saw and on the right is the same hallway but filmed on the kit lens and as you can see the kit lens all the lines are straight and on the fisheye lens everything is just very distorted so as you saw in the previous clip, the fish eye indoors is very bowed on the ends and very distorted. And I have found a way to correct that in post-production if that is something that you don't mind doing. So right here on my computer, I have Filmora. This is the software that I use to edit. And so here I have the fish eye video from the hallway. So I'm just going to import that into the project. And then I'm going to double click it. And so as you can see, there's this option for lens correction. So I'm just gonna check that and then it brings up this menu. And so I'm gonna click select model. And as you can see, it's showing like GoPros and stuff. So this is basically supposed to be used for action cameras, but it can be used for the fisheye lens. I have tried this before and I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it. So I have found that for some unknown reason, it works best with the Ion Camera Air Pro 3. I have no clue what camera that is, but I'm just gonna select that. And then it automatically chooses 1080p, which is the resolution that i am shooting in and then for adjust level we're just going to adjust it all the way to the left to negative 100. so if you look in the top right corner you can see that the picture changes as we move this slider and we're going to put it all the way to negative 100 and click ok so as you can see the picture looks a little bit better but i can make it even better so what you're going to want to do is export this so i'm just going to call it um lens correction one and I want to export it to the best quality so I'm gonna go best okay export
Then what we're gonna do is import the video that we just made. Then we no longer need the original video, so we're gonna delete it from the timeline. Then we're gonna put lens correction one in the timeline and double click it and we're going to lens correct it again. So the same steps, we're gonna turn on lens correction, choose this camera and put the slider all the way to the left. Click OK and export it. So this is what the final lens correction looks like. As you can see, the lines are pretty much straight. I will say it loses a little bit of the quality. The picture is not as sharp, but you can see everything that you need to see. And this is just a comparison side by side. So the final lens corrected image is on the left and on the right side is the 16 millimeter image from before. And finally, here are the three images side by side. So on the left is with no editing, in the middle is the first lens correction, and on the right is the second lens correction. So, one week later, what do I think about these two new additions to my filming setup? Well, first, let's start with the Manfrotto Mini Pixie Tripod. One thing that I definitely should have mentioned at the beginning of this video is if you click this little red button right here, the ball head actually moves and rotates so you can hold your camera at a different angle. So some people like to hold their tripod like this. I personally just like to hold it straight up and down. So I will be keeping mine facing upwards, but that is definitely an option. And another thing that I just noticed right before turning on the camera is on the feet, there are these little pads. So it's like how you have the pads on the bottom of your laptop. So it's not going to slip even if you put it on top of a smooth table. I adore this. This is light yet heavy. Like it doesn't <laughs> feel cheap. It feels like it was made very well. I am very impressed by this. Also, you saw the last clip where I was walking through the hallway. So I actually had two cameras on this at once and I will insert a picture. So when I was walking through the hallway, I used my bracket and instead of having my camera and mic on it, I put two cameras on this tripod and I held it like this and I walked through the hallway to give the side by side comparison. So I filmed both of those clips at the same time while having two cameras on this little tripod. And I'll show you a picture that it does stand up on its own with both cameras attached to it. So as you can see in that picture, the tripod is underneath one of the cameras, like it's very much to one side, meaning there's not much support on the other side. If I plan to do more side-by-side -side camera comparisons, I'm gonna have to figure out a better way to do it because I don't think that's the safest way. However, I was able to hold it handheld and walk through that hallway no damage, no cameras falling, nothing coming loose. It held up very well. And then I put it down on the table and took that picture and nothing fell over. There was no, it didn't even look like it was gonna fall over. It was very sturdy. So this held up two cameras. This little thing held up two cameras. So I am so impressed with this. So if it can hold two cameras, it can definitely hold your camera and a mic. You do not have to worry about that. Now, as for this lens, I think that it's good. I don't think that it is good for indoor filming. So you can use the little lens correction trick that I showed you. I know that Filmora isn't the only software that can do it, so if you have Adobe Premiere, maybe it can do it in there, in Final Cut. I'm sure that there are other programs that allow you to correct lens distortion, so you can look into that. So for indoor filming, it does look kind of wonky, and I don't know if you remember, but when I was out in the field, when I held it really close to my face, my face kind of blew up, so you do kind of have to hold it at arm's length, but, Honestly, for $189,
I am so impressed by this. Like, I did not spend a lot of money, like, when it comes to camera stuff. Like, I'm not saying, like, I spent about $210, $220. I'm not saying that's not a lot of money. Like, I don't just have money to spend all willy-nilly. I literally made a video talking about how much I make on YouTube. So, <laughs> if you want to check that out. It's not a lot of money. So, I don't just have all this money to spend. However, for camera equipment, getting, like, two very good quality items for just over $200. I am so satisfied with that purchase. I will be using this a lot, especially in my car because it gets so much in the shot. And I'll be using it a lot outside because when you were outside, you couldn't really see the distortion as much as you could see it indoors. I believe the reason for that is when you're outside, there's no definite lines. Like there's no definite lines of trees or bushes. Like those things aren't straight lines. Meanwhile, walls are straight and doors are straight. So like you're expecting to see those straight lines. Meanwhile, the lens doesn't give you those straight lines. So that's why it gets very disorienting. Meanwhile, outdoors, there's no definite straight lines. You're not expecting to see straight lines. So that's why it doesn't look as distorted outdoors. So maybe I won't be using this lens in my house, but definitely outside and definitely in my car. Also, let me know what you guys think, because I know that sometimes a fisheye lens can like make you a little woozy and stuff. So I'm saying all these things about how much I like it and how I'm going to be using it, but you guys, the viewers, let me know what you think because if it is disorienting and if it makes you feel some type of way, maybe I won't use it as much because I don't want you guys to feel like you're on a roller coaster when you're watching one of my videos, but as of right now, at the time of me filming it, I am so impressed with this lens. I am so impressed with the mini pixie tripod. I am so happy with these two purchases as of right now. The low light on this wasn't great but honestly I don't plan to be outside at 10 30 at night vlogging because I'm not trying to get mugged so I'm not gonna be like hey look at my expensive camera and lens and mic and tripod don't rob me even though it's nighttime like nah, I'm who's vlogging at night not me so for me that's not that big of a deal if you're gonna be doing a lot of nighttime vlogging then that might be something that you want to take into consideration so let me know down below what you guys think of this lens, of this tripod. Are you considering buying it? Did this video help you in your purchase decision? Let me know down below. So that is all for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. I hope it helped you guys. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you think your friends will enjoy it, be sure to share it with them. All my social media links will be down below in case you want to follow me on there. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make new videos every Monday and I'll see you next Monday with a new video.